Now that you are stretched out and warmed up, it's time to move on to some exercises that build lean body mass. If you're just beginning a fitness program, start simple and respect your limitations. Remember, when you've reached the level of fatigue, you've achieved your goal. Before you know it, you're gonna be stronger. You'll be able to gradually increase the intensity by either adding weight or reps. People who exercise on a daily basis find they can reach their goals quicker. Here are some muscle building exercises that require you to only use your body weight. Robbie will demonstrate a basic lunge for you. Watch as he starts out in a standing position. The abdominal muscles are tight. He has good posture and his feet are shoulder width apart. Now, he takes a step out with his right leg while his left leg is bending towards the floor. Notice the tips of his toes remain on the floor. He's pushing to the upright position through the heel of his front leg, which stays under his knee at all times. Then he starts out again, stepping out with the left leg. Begin with as many lunges as you can until you can accomplish 15 to 20 reps with each leg. This exercise helps build the quads, hamstrings, and glutes. Here are things to avoid while doing a lunge. Never take too short of a step, causing your knee to move past your foot. Dip too deep where you lose your balance, or continue to lunge if it's causing you pain. The next exercise is the side lunge, which is a modification of the lunge we just did. For the side lunge, you start at the same position, but instead of stepping forward, you step to the side and stretch out one leg as you dip downwards with the other. This exercise works your hip adductors and abductors, your inner and outer thighs. Like with the basic lunge, you wanna make sure that the knee stays above your foot as you go down. Things to avoid in this exercise are going down too quickly, stepping too far or not far enough to the side, or moving in any way that causes pain. For a more focused workout of the quads and glutes that also involves the calves, hamstrings, and lower back, squats are ideal. Squats provide an intense lower body workout even when done without weights. To keep proper form, put a basketball between your back and a wall, and then make the same movement as if you were going to sit in a chair. By making sure the ball doesn't fall out, you're actually helping to guide the range of motion in your legs. Let's watch Robbie as he does a squat. He begins in the standing position with the ball between his back and the wall. His knees are directly over his feet, approximately two feet away from the wall. His chin is slightly tucked, and his arms are at his side. Then, ensuring that the ball doesn't fall to the ground, he slowly lowers his body, bending his knees as he goes down. He holds the position for five to 10 seconds. Finally, he moves back up the wall, pushing through his heels and completing the rep. To increase the difficulty of this exercise, extend your legs farther from the wall. This exercise may be especially difficult for people with reduced range of motion in their ankles and knees, so caution should be taken to not go down too far. Another thing to avoid is letting the knee extend too far beyond the foot. This can place unnecessary stress on the joint. When this exercise is done properly, you shouldn't feel pain at any point in the range of motion. Now that we've worked on the lower body, let's move on to the upper body. Robbie is gonna demonstrate two upper body exercises, the push-up and the shoulder dip. Both strengthen the chest, arms, and back. Let's start with the push-up. For the push-up, Robbie starts with his arms apart, his hands underneath his elbows. See how he keeps his feet slightly apart, his back straight, and his head and neck up? Next, he slowly lowers his body, making sure he remains within his green zone. He uses his arms, chest and shoulders to lower his body. He pauses to hold his weight, then he extends his arms back to the starting position. The difficulty of this exercise can be modified in several ways. If your arms are shaking as you go down, the push-up is too difficult. To make it easier, place your hands on a raised surface to lower the resistance. You can increase difficulty by placing your legs on a raised surface. As long as the motion is slow and controlled and you're experiencing no pain, you can perform push-ups safely. Another upper body exercise I'd like to show you is the shoulder dip. For this exercise, you're gonna need some equipment like a bench, a sturdy table, or a chair. Watch 
as Robbie begins this exercise by gripping the seat of the chair. He makes sure his arms are just slightly bent. His chin is tucked and his back is straight. Now he allows his arms to take on his weight and he slowly lowers himself down, keeping his head straight and his elbows to the side. Similar to the push-up, he pauses and then pushes himself back up to the starting position. To increase difficulty, he can dip down further or place his feet on a raised surface. For this exercise, it's important to ensure the stability of the objects you use to support your weight. And again, as long as the motion is slow and controlled and you are experiencing no pain, you can perform dips safely. The final exercise I want to show you is the single leg balance, or in simpler terms, standing on one leg. Sounds easy? Well, Robbie will show you just how difficult it can be. He starts on one leg and closes his eyes. What seems very simple in the beginning just got harder. Next, keeping his eyes closed, he touches his nose. Even more difficult. Now, he could either bounce a ball at his side while standing on one leg, or try to keep his balance on a less stable surface. Either way, what seems to be a pretty simple activity becomes a challenging way to improve your balance and coordination. To avoid injury during any variation of this exercise, it's important to stay within your limits. If you don't have a lot of flexibility in your ankle, it may not be a good idea to try balancing on a less stable surface. So there you have it. You finished a complete workout. Hopefully, you feel tired, but great. When starting a program or an exercise for the first time, it's normal to experience muscle soreness, usually a day or two after the session. This is referred to as delayed onset muscle soreness. Drinking water and stretching may help decrease muscle pain. It normally takes three to four days for this to pass. Often, it'll go away with your next exercise session. If despite all your attempts to be careful, you do injure yourself, one of the first measures to treat an injury is known by the acronym RICE. R stands for rest. Try not to use the affected body part. I stands for ice. Leave ice on the affected body part for 15 to 20 minutes, then take it off for one hour. Put a thin towel between the injured area and the ice so you don't freeze your skin. C stands for compression and that's usually accomplished by wrapping an elastic bandage around the affected area. And E stands for elevation. Try to get the affected limb up above the level of your heart. RICE is also a good method to use for treating your joints, even when they aren't injured. I often ice my joints after strenuous activity, and you can easily incorporate this into your routine. People with hemophilia need to look out for an underlying injury masking itself as a bleed. If you followed the steps in RICE and controlled your bleed with Factor and you're still having pain, you should get examined by your doctor or therapist immediately. For instance, if you twist your ankle, it may cause a bleed. The episode might resolve quickly, but when you twisted your ankle, you may have also injured the ligaments that hold the ankle joint together. If this goes untreated, your ankle could become unstable making further injury and bleeding more likely. If bleeding happens often or takes a long time to resolve, synovitis or inflammation of the synovial membrane may be to blame. Synovitis causes chronic pain and spontaneous bleeding. It can also lead to permanent joint damage. So if your pain lingers, it would be wise to consult your healthcare practitioner. Treating these problems as soon as possible decreases the risk of permanent joint damage. And when you do start to exercise again, remember to return to activity gradually and with caution. It's been my pleasure to guide you through the basics of exercise. Remember, this is a way to strengthen your body and joints so you can avoid injury and enjoy the benefits of a stronger life. I know what it's done for me and Robbie, and I know it can do much of the same for you. I'm Jeff Kahlberg, and I say, let's get fit.